and welcome back to my channel. My name's Stacy. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not new, thank you for returning. Um, if you could like and subscribe if you haven't done that already, I would really appreciate it. I'm trying to build a really great study lifestyle community here and that would be super helpful. So thank you. Um, okay, so this video is about is 10 top tips that I think would be useful for anyone before they begin their OU journey, so the Open University. Um, this is the kind of video that I wish there was more of before I started uh, my degree in September 20, no, October 2021. Um, so we'll jump straight into it and if I keep looking down it's because I've got a list so I don't forget. So um, number one is like a group of things so all relating to kind of financy type course starting things. So to start with the first thing is apply for student finance as early as possible. So if you haven't done it by now do it. Um, yeah, once it can take quite a long time because everybody is uh, doing it all at the same time. It's just one of those things. They have a rush on, so it's super helpful if you just get it in as quickly as possible um, and then you can get on with it. I do think that, and don't quote me on this, but I'm sure I've heard that the OU, even if it's not 100% sorted by the time... Um, you, you are supposed to start your module. I think you can still start your module. I'm sure that there are a couple of people on my course that did that uh, because the OU kind of are kept up to date with the process, the progress, sorry. So I think um, that's something that's worth discussing with the OU. If you don't think you have time, have a chat with them because you might, you might just be in time. Um, another thing is DSA. So DSA is Disabled Students Allowance and uh, I receive that, I'm in receipt of that I would say and that takes a really long time. It's not as scary as you probably think it will be, um, it definitely wasn't as scary as I thought it would be, it just took a long time because there's a lot of processes so um, you have to fill out a form, your doctor has to fill out a form, that took ages for me because my doctor was on holiday for a few weeks and then the request got lost um, so do chase them up if that happens to you um, then you then you get uh, like a preliminary decision back then you have an assessment with the assessment center and you need to have an appointment with them um, I did mine online or like on zoom because of covid I don't know if they're back face to face now um, that's super helpful and they try and get you they give you as much information as possible so that you can receive as much help as possible um, and then for me I then needed an ergonomic assessment and that was when an ergonomic assessor I think is what it's called came to my house and like measured me for the right fit of chair and the right size table because it's a sit stand table things like that so um, and everybody is trying to get you as much help as possible um, and after that I then needed to wait weeks for the actual um, products to arrive so it can be a really long process but it can be very worth it so I would definitely recommend doing it if it's something that you are entitled to and lastly within the group of number one is to enroll on your course as soon as possible so if you have made your decision um, I would and you've spoken to them and you know that's definitely what you want to do enroll on that course as soon as possible um, and just get it all sorted because that way it can all be sort of kept up to date together. Um, yes, that's it for number one. So number two um, kind of goes along with number one in the sense of it's ask the OU for help if you need it. So that relates to all of the things we've just discussed, financial, enrolling, DSA, they can help with all of those things, but also for example, I mentioned in my last video that 
I needed help deferring a module that I was supposed to start in February and um, they helped me with that and they were super helpful and super kind about it so yeah I would always approach them first if you need any help that's literally what they're there for don't be worried about it they're really kind and nice about everything um, and it's their job essentially so yeah ask them for help if you need it don't be scared um, and I would say that's probably the same for most unis but I just can't speak for most unis um, number three um, is get started as soon as possible so this is just a tip from my perspective because when I um, the module itself the module website will open about usually about two weeks before your start date um, and one of those weeks at least will include freshers week so what I did was I got started on my module as soon as I could reading through the material familiarizing myself with um, the layout of the module like website and where everything is and trying to find help during um, freshers week if, I, if there was something that I felt I needed to um, find or anything like that um, and I started the work as well now for me that was imperative because I have a disability that can set me back for weeks at a time sometimes and I knew that I was probably going to come across some tricky times as I always do especially in winter um, and that I wouldn't I didn't want to be sort of really really far behind and um, thank goodness I did because I ended up catching Covid which sent me into a huge flare and I ended up still being weeks behind but just only about enough that I could catch up with so for me it was really really helpful I know that some people just don't worry about it and they don't have an issue um, with like being a little bit behind or a little bit ahead or, the, or just going week by week um, I, I, I do think that it's still worth just having that week or two in the bag just in case but again that's totally up to you and it, it will depend on your motivation levels so if you know that you are a highly motivated individual and that you manage to stick to a routine really well and that you don't have anything in your life that might particularly upset the balance then you're probably going to be fine um, but yeah if you do know that you are someone where things might come up if you've got children or a career or whatever then I do think it's worth just having that little bit of leeway. Uh, number four I did debate whether or not to, to add this, but it is helpful for some people. So what I realized is that not everybody studies the entire module. So some people will study bits and pieces that are interesting to them, um, but really focus on the parts of the module that relate to the relevant TMA. So a TMA is a tutor marked assessment or tutor marked assignment and um, there are also things called ICMAs which is like a computer marked assignment or something and they're like tests and things like that but essentially no one's checking your progress on there no one's like going oh did they do this week's work so it's very self-led very self-directed which means if all you want to do is pass a module technically you can just go for the um whatever it is that relates to the assignments that are due for that course or the module um i am not that person i study everything and i mean everything i read every little thing i attended every single tma and uh, not tma tutorial i yeah that's me i am the person that reads the things they don't even need to read but that's just me and it's because I am I know that well firstly I'm passionate about the course but also I f it makes me feel more prepared even if I'm not it just makes me feel that way and it makes me have less anxiety about it but yes if you are super behind for some reason um, and something's happened and you've got a TMA coming up you can just 
dip into those bits that are relevant um, if you just want to just pass that TMA. Um, number five is try to create a cozy workspace. So I know that not everyone is for, as fortunate as me in the sense that I have this tiny little corner of the bedroom that I have created into my workspace. So um, I've decorated it exactly how I want it. It's very comfortable. I was lucky enough to be provided with furniture that made it comfortable as well. I know that that's not the case for everybody. Um, and that's actually not even what I really mean. So for me to study, that is the kind of thing I love. I love to have the little space. It makes it much easier for me. I also like um, to have everything where I can see it and I know I've got everything I need. But you can recreate that elsewhere. So for example, at the moment I'm at my dining table and if this was all I had, I would have created like a little bag or a little basket, like a tote bag or a little wicker basket or something where it's got all of my uh, like my reader in it, my pencil case, somewhere that that's where I put my laptop. Um, just all the things that I would need for that any study session that I do. And that way you can just pull it out. It doesn't always have to stay on the table. If you do, if that's how you work best, do that. But for me, I've, there's no way it would all still be in one piece. So I would, yeah, create a, like a little basket or bag or something so I know it's all there and if I'm about to study if I get that 20 minutes in the day where I, all of a sudden I have a chance to study I can just go and do it and the same works for people um, who go to cafes and things like that to study have a bag like a go bag ready so it's again it's got everything you need in it and you can just pick it up and go and it's something that you can just it makes it easier and that's kind of the point is that if you've got a way of making studying easier you'll do it more and I think for me that is my sorry I just touched the mic um, for me that is my my little study area my little cubby hole if you like my little like corner of the room um, and for you that might be the sofa or the bed or whatever but as long as you've got everything there and that you need that just makes it easier um number six is for people that don't like silence like me i am a i like silence to study person um although there were a couple of times where i didn't love the silence um for the most part i am a i like to concentrate in silence um or even actually the opposite which is where my house was so loud because I've got a child and a husband and they get on with their day while I'm studying sometimes so I will put on um, noise cancelling headphones and listen to something like lo-fi beats on YouTube or um, classical music apparently is very good I did try it it was fine um, and then you have other options so for me what i found was really good is putting on my um, headphones my noise cancelling headphones uh, if it was loud in the house and then playing um she's a youtuber and i'll try and link her as well if i can she's called i want to say it's merv now i may have completely butchered that but i want to say that it's how it's spelt her name is m-e-r-v-e and she is at uni in Edinburgh I think and she does these really sort of like ambient noise study sessions study with me videos and they can last for ages and she does like the Pomodoro technique as well which is good and I found that really good because although it wasn't like loud noise she's often in a library or in our own home and it's not noisy at all it's, it's just like you can hear kind of like the of the pen and think and like the coffee cup going down it's, it's very little noise and I found that really helpful um, just to block out the ambient noise of my house um, at times um, but other people like the noise and there are um, groups you can join through Freshers Week and things like that where um, people will open up a room so if I'm studying I can open up a room on Facebook 
what's it called spaces or whatever it's called where they open up um their own space and it they decide so it's either a quiet room or a um a noisy room or a cameras off study session that kind of thing so there is really something for everybody so that could be worth a try too and it can make you feel less isolated as well uh, number seven is create a routine if you can so for me I'm not necessarily talking about I study every Saturday from 12 till 4 or whatever it is and then every Tuesday from 6 till 10 you know you can do that and that's great if you do but this for me was more about sort of creating the same kind of thing as like a, a nighttime routine or a morning routine and it's the way that certain actions um, sort of trigger your mind to get into that mindset so for example when you go upstairs and you wash your face and you brush your teeth and you get changed into your pajamas that's a signal to your brain to say all oh, right it's bedtime now and that's why so many people do it and the same thing for your morning routine it helps you wake up more easily quite often so for me my study routine would be I get a coffee or a hot drink because that to me is comforting so I'll get a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or whatever it is depending on the time of day and then I will go upstairs and I will sit down at my desk um, and I'll light a candle and put my fairy lights on and get everything as I need it to be and then I go and quite often I found before I started doing anything like that I would sort of sit there staring off into space and then go oh yeah I want to get a drink and oh I'll just do this and I'll just do that and actually I'd waste a lot of time doing that whereas once I got into this kind of rhythm it it definitely started sending those signals and I'm able to focus so much quicker and that's coming from a meeting or coming from playing with my son or a day out or whatever I find that if I do that I can I can start to focus almost immediately so I think that's a really good idea to do if you are someone who tends to procrastinate struggles with motivation and things like that so it can it takes a little while but if you do the same thing over and over uh, it could be such a great way to get into it. Um, number eight is to make sure that you attend tutorials. Now I know I've said this before in other videos but it's because it's so important. Um, I attended every single tutorial that I'd booked and, and even if you can't make it, I'll just say this, there will be another one available usually so if you can't make the one that you originally wanted to go to for some reason try to get in on another one of the same topic um, they give the best tips for TMAs they give not even just for TMAs but just for the course overall and if you're someone like me you find who finds it sort of I find it easier to understand things when I've discussed them sometimes or I've heard it being discussed uh, rather than just reading it so it's great for that and also um, it helps you to just feel part of the community and you can kind of bounce off each other in the little chat box and things like that so I would definitely recommend TMAs, I, I, well not TMAs, sorry tutorials, I can't recommend them enough, um, they were super helpful to me and actually um, my tutor the feedback that he gave me once was that he could tell in my assignment that I had actually attended I think it was two tutorials um, for that particular TMA um, he actually said I can tell that you've attended them just from your writing like just from how it was done and I don't know how but he could tell I must have added in the things that they specifically had mentioned um, but yeah so it's is worth doing they appreciate it and um, it's super helpful um, that actually leads on to number nine really well because uh, number nine is to read your feedback so they talk about this actually at the beginning of the um, the beginning of the year so they will say um, make sure you read your feedback don't just look at the um the score blah 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 
and you'll go blah 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 because <laughs> it gets said quite a lot but it's so true because whatever the the result you get the score that you get you will have some kind of reaction to it good or bad and it will be an emotional reaction um and so the advice that we were given was just if you're having a excuse the dog if you're having an emotional reaction to it just take a minute just take a day like sleep on it whatever and i'll be honest even i i got a couple of um 100 percent did i get a couple yeah um and when i got those even then i had to sleep on it to be able to focus on the feedback um even though it was great feedback so i i definitely reckon sorry i'm losing my voice i definitely recommend that i recommend that if it's not a score or a grade that you hoped or a mark whatever you call it that you hoped for um just allow yourself that time allow yourself to have whatever emotional reaction you're going to have to it and then maybe come back to it the next day and if you're not quite ready come back to it the next day but make sure you read it don't just dismiss it because the bottom line is we are writing those assignments for our tutors it's not like that we're writing them to be published or whatever we're writing them so that our tutor knows that we understand the module and what we've been reading and what we've been learning but also it's to their taste and i think we need to accept that as well as that for me i'm very very aware that i've done quite well in this module but that's more than likely because my tutor likes my style of writing and that my next module i'm probably going to get a bit of a slap in the face with my marks compared to this year because a it's such a different module and b it will be a different tutor so it's about finding out how that particular tutor enjoys um enjoys is probably the wrong word but how that tutor wants you to write that certain assignment um, and number 10 last but not least is to stay organized now for that i mean firstly that you're going to need to go back to some of the things that you've learned in order to be able to write your tmas and your emas which is an end of module assignment things like that so you will need to go back on some of this work so for me the way that looks is um lever arch files and they are all um i've got one for each block so a block is like a term and then each of that is divided with dividers into weeks and then at the end is a tma um, section I know that not everybody works like that because a lot of people work just digitally and that's fine but just make sure that the point is make sure that everything that you are taking notes with if you've printed anything out whatever it is make sure it's organized and you know where it is because you will need to come back to it at some point point. and actually what I found is um, at first it felt like oh, okay we've just done that block i've only got to go through this bit oh we've just done that block and really that just relates to what's in this block but the further in you get the further back some of the stuff relates to so it is worth keeping everything neat and tidy and organized just so that you can come back to it um, and also last but not least <laughs> uh, make sure that you back up if you're if you're doing everything digitally make sure you're backing up your work so obviously any work you do in the module website will be saved because that's i guess goes to the cloud or however it is it's saved on there but whatever work you do make sure you're backing that up because i know a few people that did not do that and struggled so you just don't want to have to redo it is is all because that's epic um and that's it for today I know again it was a really long one I'm going to try and do a, a slightly shorter one next time but I'm just trying to give as much information as possible for people that are about to start um, with the OU because I know that there's not an awful lot of information out there 
If you have any questions or comments, just leave them below. And I really hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Mm -hmm.